Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about disaster recovery planning and backups with Zen Orchestra. So the goal of this video is to show you how, one, to properly back up the VMs and the different ways you can back them up and why one way is different than the other and why that matters and which one would be better. But that does depend on your scenario. So we're going to play out those scenarios. Second, how to recover a Zen server. This has come up a few times. Unfortunately, when it's come up is because people said, I thought I could just restore this file that I pulled and backed up over here, and it turns out all the metadata is gone. I'm hoping you are not in that scenario. You're watching this before you get to that scenario. And that's some of the goals here we have is to make sure you understand how these backups should be done. Also, we're going to be doing this with the fully open source version, as in there are no paid utilities in here or anything like that. And I bring it up because I like to make sure this is accessible for people wanting to test this out, try it with their home lab. So I will leave a link to this, how to build Zen Orchestra from sources. So we're actually going to be doing the demos with Zen Orchestra built from source, which means don't use it in production. This is for people who want to test it, set up your home lab. You're an enthusiast and you don't not need support from the corporate. Um, that's something I wanted to cover real quick, though, is to make sure that, yes, this is all open source. Yes, you can get all of this. And yes, I'll leave the instructions, which I have in this video right here of exactly how to set all this up. And of course, I'll also leave a link to my entire getting started with Zen server video. If you're unfamiliar with Zen server and you want to get it loaded and XCPNG specifically, I have an entire video I'll link to below for that. Before we get further into this video, if you can click that like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, I have another video that I'll leave a link to where I go in-depth about the structures inside of Zen. But in short, so we are on the same nomenclature here. We have a series of Zen server hosts, which make up a pool. And even if there's only one host, it is a lonely pool of one. If you have many hosts, that's great. And where all these hosts are doing is sharing all the metadata for all the VMs, whether the VM is stored on local storage, whether it's stored on a shared storage pool, all that information is part of a metadata. And this is one of the first problems I want to address right away that I've seen a lot of people come to me with. They have files. They backed up the VHD file because they saved it on a share on an external device. And they go, hey, I just grabbed those VHD files. I backed them up, right? Kind of. You now have files that have UUIDs. That's fine, except for I don't know what they go to. And this is a challenge because if you don't know what VM they belong to, you know, you don't really have a great backup because they're not something I can easily and quickly restore. That's all stored in this metadata information. Now, as I said, it's spread across the first, the master, and then every subsequent host added to the pool. And if it's a host of one, then it only resides there. So if there's a catastrophic failure of that one single host, all the metadata goes out the door. So even if you had amazing, resilient, redundant backups of all these VHD files with some external shared storage system, such as a SAN, a really high-end failover, you still don't have the metadata related to them. So that's why I want to cover the proper ways to back up Zen, because this is, seems to be the way a lot of people, that at least we've done some consulting with, have come. And if you look at the forums, there's a few posts about this um, where people talk about, well, I just grabbed the files. I can't just restore them. No, it's a little more complicated than that, but we're going to dive into all those complexities. Zen offers a lot of different ways to do backups. We've got Delta, Continuous Replication, Disaster Recovery, and Rolling Snapshots. Not all these are technically backups, so I made a little chart here to kind of show you which one is. So metadata is like it sounds. That's the metadata that is on the pool itself. You can back that up and save it to a as a file on a storage server. That way you can do whatever with it. Take it offline, move it somewhere, back it up, get it off site, however you want. We'll cover that in a, shortly here. Rolling snapshots aren't exactly snapshots, but they're facilitated by the same automation that facilitates backups in Zen Orchestra, and they just create snapshots on the same server. But 
uh, do some reading before you decide to create a whole lot of snapshots. One, snapshots aren't leaving the server. They're on that server, so they're not really backups, but they are points in time at which you can restore. But if you create too many snapshots, you end up with a problem and you'll run into the coalescing problem, which is the system trying to track all those different snapshots, which are essentially you're splicing virtual hard drives and creating a series of them. That can be tricky to uh, for storage servers, especially if they're under heavy load, to manage that and it'll slow down your machine. So keeping more than just a few snapshots, not a great idea. I've seen people uh, keep like 10 and 15 of these. They can create some problems for you. And once again, they're on the same server, so they're not exactly incredibly useful. They're not really backups, but they are facilitated because at least they do allow you to restore to a point in time. These are the ones that I think are the most important. We have full backups and Delta backups. Full backups, well, they're full backups. They create an offline file to a storage location. Delta backups create a full backup to a storage location, but they also create the deltas in between. What the deltas are is we create one full backup, and then each subsequent backup we run in between is only the delta between the original and the next iteration of it. What that means is if there's any incremental change, so I back it up on Monday, there's 100 megs worth of changes. Now my delta is 100 megs worth of changes. I only have to back up 100 megs, not the entirety of whatever the original was. So delta backups are a much more efficient than doing full backup. Now back over here, these are the other two that are very similar to full backups, disaster recovery. It's a full copy that can go on the same pool or a different pool. So we have this pool here, and just, for example, we'll call this one our lab pool. What if I had another lab? You can actually replicate it to a completely other lab that is not even on the same site. As long as they can Zen Orchestra can communicate with both of these servers, it can co facilitate copying the data, including the metadata, around a VM and restore store that VM all the way on another system or create copies of it on another system. That's great, except for, kind of like our other example here, it's doing a full copy each time. It's going to take a while. Continuous replication. Same thing. We can do a full copy on the same pool or different pool. And if it's on the same pool, once again, kind of still a backup, but it's still on the same pool, which is probably located at the same site. But maybe you do have the pools um, separate in the building somewhere, but I'm not going to get into that level of design. But once again, it'll do it. But the difference is it's doing continuous replication, which means doing the deltas. So it's going to do a full copy. It takes a long time, uh, however long it takes to get the VM from where it is to where you want it to be, whether it's in the same pool or a different pool. And then it does deltas afterwards. Those aren't bad because now you can create a lot of these incremental versions and go back to them. But now you're also creating a whole lot of little VHD files or however they're being stored. Um, you know, if it's an LVM or whatever your storage methods are all on another server. Plus this requires you have another pool or the same pool with another XCPNG host. Not the most ideal way to back up. The ones we're going to focus on, because these work and they work the same way no matter which one we choose. It's just a matter of where they land. Um, we're going to talk mostly here about the Delta backups because they're probably the most ideal way to do your disaster recovery or even the full backups. But once again, the interface is the same, so it's your choice of which one you want to do. The first thing we need to do is have a place to put them. I said on a storage location. For our example here, and TrueNAS is not the only thing that can store it, but yes, I have a TrueNAS server. I have this TrueNAS Mini X uh, Plus, and it seems like a great device to do this demo on. So we go over my pool here, and I've created this XCPNG backup YouTube demo. That is a file place we're going to store these. Just a regular file, and we have it set up as an NFS share. And we've actually pulled this up, and you can see there's just nothing in it. So we're actually going to populate it and show you what the files look like. So this is the, me looking at the share on this particular system. Then we've exported it via NFS. And like I said, I, anything that can support NFS is going to be ideal. Yes, you can do it SMB. Uh, NFS is much more ideal for speed and for um, usability. I just find NFS to work a lot better on here, but it will work either way. So here is our exported NFS path. And we go here, we copy it, and I've already set it up. We go to settings, remotes, and here is the remote. We'll just click edit. All I do is copy paste like this but get rid of that treating, trailing slash at the beginning. And now we have the whole thing set up with an NFS here. Really straightforward. You can choose SMB 
it does warn you, SMB remotes are meant to work with Windows Server for other systems such as Linux Samba, which means almost all NAS, please use NFS. It just works more efficiently, that's why you want to do that. And then you hit save configuration and it's added. A little button here says test your remote. And it's basically telling us how much we have free, how fast it was able to talk to it, which is reasonably fast in this case. So it's able to talk to it. So as long as Zen Orchestra can talk to it, and it's able to store these files, away we go, it works. Now that we have the remote set up, let's go create a backup. We go to your new, and let's back up the metadata first, because let's assume we only have one server, so we wanna at least have the metadata backed up in case it gets corrupted, in case I have to reload my XCPNG server, I should probably have that data. Actually, we'll just call it lab backup, because we know what it is, it's metadata. So it's the lab server backup lab server backup and XO. So click the metadata, click the XO config. Now all the configuration settings that are inside of Zen Orchestra don't live inside of XCPNG, they live inside of Zen Orchestra. And if I back up the Zen Orchestra VM, yes, I do back them up. But also the option is here to back up the XO config. We choose our remote, that YouTube demo one, report settings on failure, Select the pool that we want to back up. We only have one pool, but Zen Orchestra can actually coordinate backing up multiple pools. But for this lab demo, we just have the one. And we'll go ahead and hit create. Oh, we got to add a schedule. And is wanting to know the retention. So um, keep three or keep five daily. And what I mean is I want to keep five of this and five versions of this and I want to do it daily and you can pick the hour it works at you could do it hourly but as long as you at least have some metadata backup you're good so we'll go ahead and do this hit create by default this backup job is uh, disabled you can run it manually but it's disabled to be scheduled we'll just run it manually so we don't really need to do anything more than this click that it's going to back it up and away we go success over here to restore go to metadata and I have the ability to push this back to the pool if there's more than one version. So actually we'll go back to the overview again, run it again. Give it a few seconds. It's backed up, go to restore, metadata. I can restore two different versions here based on date. Pretty straightforward for the metadata. Now let's talk about backing up the VMs. So the VMs we have in this system, we got a couple of them here. We got this TrueNAS one, the Windows one, uh, my XO lab, and one's on a local storage, one's on an, a external storage. It really doesn't matter where they're stored. What it does matter is how we want to back them up and what we may want to tag them with. I'm actually going to add another tag. So they're tagged as test machine, but let's call them Debian as well. So we'll call this one Debian. So this one's been tagged with Debian, and let's go ahead and filter none. Go to this one, I just want to add that same tag. All right, now my reason for adding these tags. Now we're gonna go make a new backup. Backup virtual machines, and we just want to back up the Debian servers. There's two options over here. Smart mode, really cool. VM statuses, I can just say all running, halted, that's kind of neat, select everything in this pool, or not resident if I had certain pools, you can you know filter down here, or we can do this. Tags. Just back up the Debian servers, just like that. And now I can just filter by tag. How am I gonna back them up? Well, we talked about the different options. We'll talk about just doing a delta on these. We'll call it XCPNG YouTube backup, and there's not much else I need to do here. The other options, if you do code advance, full backup interval. Let's bring up what that is real quick. Now the challenge with deltas, and we'll actually scroll to the top here. Full backups, backup, boom, 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 all the files, they're gonna be huge, every one of them. Delta backups, one full and a series of incrementals. But on that off chance, our storage server has a goof and it corrupted this. I can't go grab Friday's backup and bring it all the way back to Sunday because the way you have deltas, if I wanna restore Friday's backup, I need the incremental backups in between the chain of them in order to work. So while Delta backups are certainly cost savings in terms of storage, 
they do potentially open up yourself to risk if there's too many of them. Now it has integrity checking, it does a series of backups, but that's what this option's for, is maybe you want 15, 20 of them, you want a long amount of these for some reason, and you may want to back up one to be full in between. That's what this allows you to do. So if you click on this, look down here, Delta Backup Initial Seed, it allows you to have multiple versions of the full backup interval. This advanced setting defines the number of backups after which a full backup is triggered, the maximum length of a delta chain. For example, the value of two, the first two backups will be a full and a delta, and then a third will start a new chain with a full backup. So basically it allows you to uh, add some chains in between. So that's a pretty neat feature that's able to do that. Now let's um, turn off smart mode, which is cool because maybe you want to tag everything production or whatever. Let's show you how to do this manually. We can just select the VMs, really easy. So we have uh, this one right here, and we select the VMs, put the schedule. Um, I don't know, we'll say hourly, because we want an hourly version of this. And I usually tag this with like keep five, or keep however many on there, and then you change the backup retention to five. And you'll see why when I did this, if we say every hour, hit okay. Now we know it's hourly, we'll turn it to enabled. Even hourly backup. Got spell backup right, there we go. And snapshot mode underneath it, just so you know, it does have the option to with memory or offline. It actually has the option to start and stop the server if you need to. The last little thing I'll mention is they have the proxy option. If you were using Zen Orchestra to manage a remote system, goes beyond the scope of this video, um, but you obviously couldn't use Zen Orchestra to manage it remotely because it's handling all the backups. And if it's remote, it's probably not high bandwidth. You can actually specify proxies on site Maybe one day I'll do a more advanced video about that, but it's kind of a neat option to where you can say, coordinate that through this other proxy server that's very specialized for doing that. But that's a feature and there's a write-up they have on how to do that. We'll just do this, pretty simple. It's enabled, I really back up and I don't really got time for an hour. So we're gonna run it right now and just run it manually. So we can show you how it looks. All right, the backup is successful. We have the full export here. It was 13 gigs exported. It says merge, but there's not really anything to merge. We'll get what that means in a second. And uh, we skipped ahead all of four minutes to make this happen. Reasonable time to back up. Now let's see what happened as far as looking at the VM here itself. It has a snapshot. Don't touch this snapshot. This is the XO backup hourly DB and how it has in brackets there. This is attached to the backup for this particular system. Now, what that means is when we run the next one, it will back up again. And we'll go ahead and run this real quick. When it backs up again this time, it's going to look at the differential. First, we create a second snapshot because we never destroy the old until we start with a new. So it's going to create a second, second snapshot. And now it deleted that snapshot. Now we can look at the backup. It's going to say started, successful. It turns yellow while it's doing this. And of course, we can see it from two different views. We can go back over to the overview and see it here. Actually, I'll turn off the hourlies. I don't need it. And we only transferred 34 megabytes. That's it. So it was successful. We transferred 34 megs, and it only still took a few seconds this time to back up. So it's the snapshot starts from here to here. So 39 to 42, so three seconds for the snapshot, six seconds for the transfer. Uh, then it goes through the merge once there's a merge. And it's actually merge and purge would be a good way to think about it. When we were talking about creating these deltas, once it exceeds the number of deltas, which we said keep five of them, it's got to start trashing once there's more than five. So it'll have a merge and purge essentially as a part of the process. So pretty straightforward. And each time we run this, there is one more iteration. So this one was 34 megs. But before we do that, let's create some noise. So go over here, go to the console. And uh, I've run this before. And it basically, we're just gonna run this little speed test. All it's gonna do is dump a big file here, move it around. So we've made changes to the VM because I don't really have anything going on in this VM. So we just created a file and deleted a 1.9 gig file. Now it's gonna compress some, so it won't be quite 1.9 gigs of transfer, I'm gonna suspect here. Uh, but let's go ahead and run that again now. That we've changed a few things on this VM. Takes a little bit longer, it's slowing down here because it's moving pretty fast. Uh, let's see, go back over to the backups overview. We'll see just how much is transferring. Gives you the status, yellow just means it's running. We got through the snapshot part, we're doing the transfer part. 
successful. Okay, and I was wrong. It is pretty much the full amount of data that I changed. It said, hey, there's 1.8 gigs worth of changes that we could see. So the VM difference is now backed up 1.8 gigs over here. So when there's almost no changes, it's 34, and we can run it again because we're not changing much and see what happens when we run it this time. Oh, skipped. I was hoping it would do this. This is something that is important. If you have too many backups and not enough storage speed and all trying to run at the same time, it has to coalesce these changes. Now, I'm not going to dive deep into Zen Server Coalescence, but this is a problem a lot of people run into. They start setting a not really fast storage pool with a whole lot of backups. And each backup, as it takes a snapshot, it, once it purges out the old snapshot, that has to coalesce back into one file. While you're waiting for that to happen, if there's a heavy I.O. load, it will take longer. So I'm actually glad it did that. And this is important that it does this. So let's go back over here and run this one more time. Storage should be fast enough. It's probably coalesced by now. If not, we'll just get the same skipped error, but no damage is done when you're seeing this. And I like that they've added all the context. Like it takes you right to the explainer of why that happens. All right, it's still skipped. Not a big deal. We'll just wait a few minutes. And if you're ever wondering while something's coalescing, we can go look at the machine that's doing the coalescing, go to the disk. So you can click where the storage is and just click on advanced. And right there are those coalescing files. So while we're waiting for that to coalesce, it only takes a few minutes, but what does that look like on our free NAS storage machine? So we go over here and we'll go over to the pool, storage pool. And we've got about 4.7 gig used, even though we technically have three iterations of that on there, we're still not using too much. And the reason why is because, well, they're all stored inside of here. So this is what it looks like when we look in here. There is the metadata backups, which once again, these are just files. Matter of fact, specifically, they're JSON files that we can just open to dig and pull data out of. Same thing over here. There's each one of them. And scroll back up a little bit and go to the VM backups. Same thing. They've got a UUID attached to them and a series of JSON files. Three backups, three JSON files. Now, don't worry. You don't need to understand any of what these are. So if you have a total meltdown, you have a complete failure of your Zen server, but you have this share and you all you have to do is back the share up however you want. You can back it up to another. And in my case, I'm using TrueNAS. I can replicate it to a TrueNAS. I can just replicate everything in this folder over to the cloud, for example. I just back this folder up, send it to the cloud and all of my data is in there. And let me show you how that works. So we just have all these files and there are VHDs inside here. And these are the incremental ones. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and create one more real quick. Should have coalesced by now. Let's find out. All right, started. And this one should transfer fast because we didn't create much of a file. Successful, only 16 meg of changes down here. And we look over here, sort by modified time. Hey, look, only 16 mega changes. There's the two gig one. There's the 35 megs from the other one. And you get the idea there and there's the initial. These are all those different deltas on there. But because all that data is stored in these, let me go back up a couple, this VM backups folder, let's go to a completely different Zen Orchestra. And only thing we're gonna do is point that Zen Orchestra at this share. So let's assume this entire system has failed catastrophically. It's gone. Whatever happened is unrecoverable. And we have to rebuild from the files we just grabbed from the cloud and threw back into a folder. So we'll start from scratch over here. Now, I've actually already got a couple things in here, but this is like our production system uh, for doing this. And YouTube demo is what we'll call this. And I'm not going to set up a new system, but we'll say, all right, we still have the file server. Somehow it survived whatever catastrophe happened, or we've rebuilt the file server, put it at the same location. And then path to back up. Well, we go over here in TrueNAS. We look at our NFS export like before. So we're sharing NFS, copy. Because if I type that out, I'll make mistakes. Paste, get rid of that little slash up front, and uh, save config. All right. Make sure it works. Test your remote. Yep, your remote appears to work completely. Notice how it has the same amount of storage in there. So let's go look because we can at least so we're on the same page here. Go over here, settings, 
backup overview. Now this is our one that we're pretending died. And we see this TrueNAS Mini X Plus file over here that's stored with four deltas. We go over here to our new system. I know it's not new, but you know, bear with me here. Use imagination, go to restore. I know I got everything on here. Hey, there's those same files. I filtered for them, found it, and now I can go here and restore them to my working Zen server. So this is the advantage you have with this type of backup. Now we could have done this with a full backup and it would have worked fine, um, but I like the deltas a little bit better. That just comes down to choice. I'll leave links to where you can read all in depth on there. But this is a really convenient way to back things up to a file location. This allows you to have the VM, all the metadata, everything with it backed up to a file. You can throw that on, you know, for example, a TrueNAS server. And on that TrueNAS server, now you just back that thing up to the cloud and away you go. Just grab that entire folder right here. And as long as, go back to storage, to pool. As long as you're backing up this folder, wherever it is you back it up to, if there's a disaster at that site, hopefully you have that data kept off site, this is what you need to restore your Zen server. Now, the other aforementioned backup types, if you were to do this, it does require that you have either another pool to copy it to, may not be ideal. There are certainly use cases for it. And one of them I'll bring up, they did a recent write-up on how they use continuous replication to migrate data centers. That's a blog post I'll leave a link to uh, over at XCPNG. Maybe I'll do a video on that too, as I think it was clever the way they use this. This is great for replicating sites where you have a Zen server at this site. I want to replicate all my data to another Zen server that is up and running. That is a very valid way to do it as well. Not everybody has that level of convenience. More likely, and something we've set up for more of our clients, is Delta backups where they have a single Zen server or even if they have a couple in a pool for HA reasons. And we want to have static offline files that we can do something with and handle as a file level thing. And all you have to do to get these back up and running, get Zen Orchestra up and running. Well, for, I guess load Zen server first, get Zen Orchestra up and running, point Zen Orchestra up at wherever that storage location was for these full or Delta backups and start restoring things. That's it. We don't even need the metadata because we're building on a new Zen server. And like I said, the metadata is important if you keep all those NFS files and you want to keep a backup of it. I mean, keep that. But having the deltas is the quickest and fastest way to restore your VMs. It's also convenient whenever VMs get somehow broken or you've done something weird, which a lot of people, especially when you're building your home lab, I know you do things like you thought something might have been a fun idea and you're not sure if it'll work. It's also convenient to have these because if you break your Zen server and have to completely reload it, being able just to go back in there and say, hey, here's a Delta, here's my VMs, I'm just gonna go and restore them, no problem, because that is something that is, uh, well, really easy to do. You can go here, restore VMs, latest, and I can I chose one, but actually let's go over here where we have more stuff. You wanna restore the latest backup of every VM you did inside of there, um, you could do that. It does mass restore. It'll do mass backup, mass restore. So it's actually kind of a fun way to do it. So you can actually rebuild your array. This is actually also what we use. That's why our labs are always loaded on different systems that come in for demo and review when I do these videos. We're using this same methodology. We have all our VMs that we use for testing, PFSense and everything all stood up right here as a option to be restored. Actually, we'll go over here. So here's like everything we have and we can quickly throw it, grab a list of them uh, and dump it to a freshly loaded Zen server with no thought and have all the VMs stood up in a matter of, well, however long it takes to transfer. We mostly waited on a transfer, um, but the functional time management time spent on it's very little because you can just mass select VMs if you want, filter them for a specific uh, value of, you know, lab or whatever, grab them, just throw them over there, check the restore box, let the system go. When it's done, I start doing more videos. So hopefully this gives you a better idea. I'll leave links to all this. They've got it all broke down for all the different methodologies and details they may have left out are all in here, uh, but it's a really solid backup. It's really one of the things I love about when you use Zen Orchestra with XEPNG. It's a very complete system for being able to do these full backups. And all these demos were done, as I say at the beginning, on the open source version uh, that you can use at home in your lab, build this out, learn how it all works. It's the same as you get when you um, pay for it, but you don't get any support with it. So uh, great for tinkering, great for messing around. If you move it in production, you can make the people happy uh, at the top who you have to sell this to in management. Yes, they offer full support packages and everything if you want to buy them from Zen Orchestra. They got it over on their website on there. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.